Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to episode 179 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilase. I cannot believe how close we're inching to episode 200. We'll have to think of... Send me some ideas for something interesting to do for episode 200. Um, anyway, as always, live on YouTube. Please feel free to ask questions, leave comments, whether you're watching live, whether you're watching the recording. Please subscribe to my channel and please do consider supporting my work on coffee. You will find the link to all of that below. And I should also say that tomorrow at the uh, same sort of time, at 4 p.m. UK time, I will be joined by the one and only Max Forty for another top 10 rundown. So it'll be five from me and five from him. And I can reveal to you now, if you are watching live or watching before tomorrow, that we will be looking at our five favourite daring slash challenging perfumes. So start thinking of some scents that you personally would find daring. Uh, who gets the first comment? Let me go onto the tablet to find out who the first comment was. And it's Druba saying, ooh, new Cartier. I know, that is still exciting, right? Eco Jock is saying, hello, I love many Cartier perfumes, says Keith, so do I. And Mathilde Laurent, of course, has been the in-house perfumer there for many, many years. I have got a tremendous amount of time for her. I'm always fascinated to see what she releases, even though I may not always like every single thing. She is just so supremely talented. And some of the work that she did for Garlin was fantastic. She's, she's a very unusual perfumer in that she has only ever worked for two brands. So not only is she an in-house perfumer at Cartier, she was also pretty much only at Garlin before she moved on to Cartier, and, and that doesn't happen very often in perfumery. Um, it would be amazing to uh, interview her live on this channel, so if anybody out there has any sort of clout at all with Cartier, tell her that Perselaise would love to interview her, but I think she's one of these people who is unjustifiably not confident about her English. I've met her a couple of times and spoken to her, and I think she thinks that her English isn't all that great, whereas actually she, it is absolutely fine and she would be fine in an interview. So let's all go marching down the road in Paris. To, well, actually, let's not, because that would mean we can't socially distance. Let's all write to Cartier and say, please let Mathilde Laurent be interviewed on Love at First Scent. Um, anyway, uh, how do I get to see the beginning? I always miss these when you do a series of reviews, says Eco Jog. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Can you like rewind on YouTube? I'm not sure. I just bought this, says Judy. Which one did you buy? And Shimon is here as well. Hi. Time to musk up. Hello, Persilase. And Quan says, the best alternative for Frederick Mal's The Night. Ooh, I don't know. We, we can't go on to that one now. So, Mathilde Laurent has done something interesting because she has not she has released a trio of scents. That's interesting in itself. Um, but And they're all roses. So they're all, in a way, three new roses from Cartier. But also what's intriguing is that each one fits into one of the different sub-ranges within Cartier. So we've got Leur Ose, which I think is the, the daring hour or the dared hour, and that fits into the Les Heures de Parfum range. And we haven't had a new Heure for at least five years, I think. If you remember, that was a range that came out a while ago, um, each one named after a different hour but this was on a weird clock because it was a clock with which went up to 13. And there were some gorgeous scents released in that, including Leur Fougueuse, uh, Leur Défendu. There was the Mysterious Hour. There was the 13th Hour. Really, really striking pieces of work. So this is, this is I think, number five, which I believe means that we've got one to go. So Leur Rosé is part of Les Heures de Parfum. Then we've got Pure Rose, which comes under the Les Epures de Parfum, which is a range that I think just came out last year with three florals. I think there was a Lily of the Valley, a Magnolia, and I think the idea behind those is to just present very, very clean, unsullied, pure floral notes. And then there's Oud and Pink. I'm not making it up. Can you see that? Oud and Pink, which comes under the Les Heures Voyageurs. And they're all their oud scents. And some of the Cartier ouds actually are interesting. And, and Mathilde Laurent has, has done intriguing things with them. You know, she's definitely tried to have fun with oud. And, and I think by and large, she succeeded. I've covered a few of them on Persilase.com. Now, I don't necessarily think we need to spend ages smelling all of them. I'll start with with pure. I've, 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 I've smelt these before. And, and the one that I want to talk to you about the most is, is Oud and Pink, because um, it's, it, it, it's not what you think it's going to be from its name. Now, Pure Rose um, is just that. It, it doesn't reinvent the wheel. It's, it's a very, very gentle, 
Yeah, it, 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 I think it's, it's the sort of perfume for which the word lovely was made, right? It's a lovely, pink, gentle, I mean, on paper, actually, really lovely. Um, very gentle, very well handled rose. It doesn't become too soapy. It doesn't become too powdery. And I guess maybe that's because it retains a little bit of a green bite. So as far as solly floors go, you probably couldn't ask for much more. Um, but it's, it, it is quite simple. So for instance, I'm thinking something like Saint Majeste La Rose from Serge Lutens has got a little bit more drama, maybe because it's got the honeyed notes. And actually, there's one rose solly floor that I smelt very, very recently. I think it's been around um, for a, for about a year, but I smelt it very recently. And, and as far as rose solly floors go, I was blown away by this one, and I thought I must actually write about it on the blog. It's from Paris Monte Carlo, and it's the rose that Jean-Claude Elena did for them, it, the, the Rose de May. He's done a rose solly floor for them and a jasmine one, um, and it's... Those two, are, those two are just beautiful, as 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 far as sort of photorealistic evocations of of um, flowers are, are concerned. Um, but pure rose, absolutely does the job very well. Um, it's just so beautifully innocent, and it reminds me of the two limited edition candles that Diptyque did. Was it two years ago? They did a centifolia candle and a damascena candle, and. They were just heavenly. I actually had to buy a few of those, and it's so, so, so infuriating and upsetting that they were limited edition because they, they, they were some of the best rose candles I've ever smelt. And, and this has that feel. So it certainly, it certainly does what it says on the tin. And you know, I don't want to sort of damn it with faint praise because it, do, it, it deserves more than faint praise. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel synthetic at all. It's really nicely done, really, really nicely done. But 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 solid floors like this are, 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 are never going to capture my heart, I don't think. Although they would be the kind of thing that I may give to somebody as a gift if I think, okay, well, maybe they just want something quite simple, quite streamlined. Let's see what comments we've got from you so far. Um, Uden Pink says, Ashvark, why does it remind me of an Aerosmith song? Oh, and then Shimon says, because they had a song called Pink. I don't think I know the song called Pink. Is Pure Rose Close to Rose Kabuki by Dior, says All Fact of Stories. Rose Kabuki, I seem to remember, was much more powdery, I think. But I would have to check my notes. Ood in an elevator, says Tina. Very good. <laughs> you get the prize today. I heard from a rose oil aficionado, says Ashfaq, that had their that heard that their rose de taif extra is really good. I don't know that one. Uh, Aperol Spritz, yes, I stocked up on those Valentine's candles from Diptyque last year, there to die for. They're really good, weren't they? They're really good. They need to bring them back. Okay, then we move on to the one from the hours. So, Leur Ose, is, which, which somebody who speaks French, can you explain to me? Is this, is it the daring hour or is the meaning subtly different? Is it the sort of the dared hour, having dared? Now, this is the one that I think Mathilde Laurent herself thinks is 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 a bit out there apparently she's called it her punk rose um and i think that just sort of serves to highlight that she is a very very sweet nice kind person as far as you know in my interactions with her as far as i know everybody likes her because if this is Mathilde laurent's idea of punk you just sort of go oh that's really really nice let's let's not um Let's not rob her of her illusions, because this is the nicest punk rose <laughs> I could imagine smelling. Now, what is interesting about it is that it has got a kind of funny cherry cola, soda, fizzy drink thing to it, you know, I'm, I'm, and, 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 and heading towards garish which maybe is Mathilde Laurent's idea of punk, but she herself, I think, is just too elegant a person to really, really go all out and produce something sickly and crazy and wacky. Um, and I'm not sure it has the courage of, it, of its convictions. I'm not sure it is actually that daring. Um, it's daring in quite a coy way. It's daring in quite... Um, just just a sweet way you know like um 
if you've ever sort of interacted with really young children, if they, th and I'm talking like really young, maybe they're like three or four, and they think they've done something really, really naughty, and you have to sort of do the whole parental role thing and go very, very stern faced and sort of do the, whereas inside you're thinking, oh my goodness, you know, this isn't such a big deal at all. It's, this is this is that this is punk in that way so it's a three-year-old idea of punk and I don't want to make it sound as though um th that's a bad thing because because it is it 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 is a sweet sort of almost cough syrupy sweet violety rose so maybe it's got a, a little a little of a little bit of lipstick ne lipstick neon quality to it um but it's not punk. It's not punk. It hasn't got enough teeth to be punk. It hasn't got safety pins. Um, this, this rose does not have any rips in its jeans. It certainly doesn't wear Doc Martens and it doesn't shave its head. It's actually quite cute. And, and maybe that says something about what punk has become. Because punk was certainly not cute when it was around. But maybe now it's been reappropriated as, as cute. Um... Let's look at comments. Yes, the Daring Hour says all fact of stories. Merci bien. Any similarities with uh, Déclaration d'un soir, says Lord Charfield. Oh, gosh, no. Um, no, the, the, the thing that struck me about... De First of all, the Déclaration d'un soir really pushed out a lot of um, Cashmiran. Mathilde Laurent loves Cashmiran. And that also had a kind of uh, capsicum, pepper note to it. I'm not getting that here. Um... Ashfaq says, I get a cherry cola type smell from some Moroccan cabbage rose and Turkish rose absolutes. Well, there you go, actually. Maybe maybe that's that kind of thing. The most interesting one, and absolutely this is not because it has oud in the name, because I don't really think of the last one as an oud perfume at all. But the most interesting one do, out of these three is oud and pink. Now, first of all, I think calling a perfume oud and pink is... Now, that's a bit more punk, calling something oud and pink. But this is also the brand that has a perfume called Oud and Oud. <laughs> um, and it, that, that's quite, that is quite an Oudy one, that one. Now, this was interesting because um, Angela says, maybe it's best that Mathilde isn't coming on as we might all be a bit much for her. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let you, um, I wouldn't let you uh, corrupt her, I think. Yeah, that's what, that's what that daring one needs to be. It just needs to be a bit more corrupt. Um... But Oud and Pink, I also didn't think was especially pink, but it was interesting because it's got a very, very, very curious retro thing to it. So let's, let's look at some more comments. Oud and Punk, says All Fact of Stories. Yeah, that would have been better. Who doesn't love Cashmere and says Eric. I love it, but I think it's overused. Like, for example, in, in Frédéric Mal's Dans tes bras, um, I, I just think when it just goes all out Cashmere and, I would have wanted something a little bit more um, um, dimensional, a bit more layered. Um, I don't know why, says Time to Musk Up, but this line reminds me of people that eat grey poupon. They've made this line fancy. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to just nod and pretend I know what you mean. Okay, this is Oud and Pink. Right. So, the, the oudiness comes through and... It's the, the oudiness that Mathilde Laurent seems to favour, which means that it heads more into, you know, what our American friends call Band-Aid territory. So it's a little bit more plasticky, a bit more medicinal rather than fecal barnyard, OK? And that, and that's fine. Um, I quite like those sorts of oudy smells. But this one, I don't know why it's meant to be pink. Never mind, put that to one side for a bit. This becomes quite retro white floral in a really, really commendable way. And I think mainly jasmine, quite quite a heavy, quite a velvety indolic jasmine, quite a bit of rose in there as well. And then suddenly, within this alchemy of this medicinally, uh, medicinal-like oud note, and candle waxy aldehydes, and jasmine, you're suddenly thinking, ooh, Lanvin's arpège, and Frederick Mal's Superstitious by Dominique Ropion. And that's when things become really interesting. Now, Superstitious from Frederick Mal um, is a fascinating scent. I find it difficult to take sometimes. Um, I, I never wear it myself personally, but Madame Persolace has a bottle. And sometimes she sprays it. 
and I just think it smells absolutely amazing on her. And then sometimes I think, oh my God, I wish you hadn't sprayed it. Because it just becomes, I don't know whether it becomes a bit too indolic, whether it becomes just a bit too crass, uh, uh, a bit too uh, monodimensional. Maybe it's a question of dosage, you know, maybe sometimes she just goes, she gets a little bit trigger happy. Um, but it is a bit of a shapeshifter. Um, in the sense that sometimes it just present, seems to present absolute refinement and sophistication and sometimes it's just crude. And this is doing a similar sort of thing with Jasmine and Oud. So if you can imagine a, a, a retro-aldehydic Jasmine concoction with a sort of medicinal Oud thrown in, this is what Oud and Pink is. And... That's that makes it interesting. So unquestionably, the more the more intriguing one of the three. Um, Love you, Papa Persilace from Georgia, says Mr. Dark Shines. This Papa Persilace thing cannot stick. So this is the one you need to try, unless of course you just want a simple pure rose. Pure rose is the one that fits its name the best. Rose, the rose, uh, the, the the daring hour. Let's smell that one. Actually, is the punk one is. Yeah, it's just too nice. It's too nice to be daring. Um, and this is the diva. This is the real diva. It's becoming so much like superstitious, but with this with this medicinal oud thing. Uh, uh, Olfactive story says, does it have more jasmine than rose? Then I would say so. I would. I would. I mean, it is. It is a sort of multifaceted floral, but certainly the main thing I'm sort of getting is this jasmine feel. Um, no, Papa Persilés will not... Sire Persilés, no. <laughs> Lord Persilés, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I haven't got a huge amount on on these ones. Uh, the, the brand about this one says, This rose plays with gender, mixing both the floral and the masculine, the rough and the smooth, a men's rose for women who wear men's fragrance, who flirt with ambivalence, plunge into the oud, rugged, gloomy, and wear a dinner jacket with nothing underneath. Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you need to smell it and tell me whether you agree that actually the jasmine note is, is, is really, really prominent. So, we are pretty much at the end of our hour. If you've stuck around for all of the lives, thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to know what the other scents are that uh, we smelled today in the other videos so you can search for them, we started with Tom Ford's Tuberose Nu, we went on to Deep Teak's Orpheon, and we've just done the three new roses from Cartier. Uh, I'm going to comment around Lord Persilés from time to time now. <laughs> what are the price points for these, Gino? Expensive. Look them up. If you go to harrods.com, they will give you the, uh, the, the, the UK prices. I'm pretty sure they're all on on Harrods. One of them could be Selfridges exclusive. Pure, pure Rose could be Selfridges. But, but, but you're, they're, 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 I think in the rounds, around about the sort of 200, 200 pound mark, and I believe the Oud one may be even more expensive. Lisa says, I wish I could smell these samples at the same time as you. Your descriptions really spark my interest. I know that would be amazing. Could you imagine if I could just sort of press a few buttons and in all your homes across the world, the smells would come through. It may happen one day. Uh, but but I, th I think we're done. Please tune in tomorrow at 4 p.m. UK time for a very, very special episode with uh, Max Forty. And just to give you a bit of a heads up, some interviews that I'm trying to line up. Uh, we, we've, we've, I think we've got final confirmation, but I don't want to reveal the date just yet of an interview with Alessandro Brun of Mask Milano. And I have also got a yes from Francesca Bianchi, um, but that won't be for a little while. But as soon as I have a confirmed date and we know we can go ahead with that one, I will let you know. That's a very exciting one as well. So be good, look after yourselves, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.